So, woke up really early today. So, just thought I'd go for a bit of a wander, see what's happening. And about, there's no one about today, so I don't seem really, I don't feel really paranoid about doing this, which is good. But, thought you take, I thought, I thought I'd take you with me. Let's go. Let's see how many rainbows we can see in windows. Let's have a look. There's one. Is there any more? Down our road, there's actually quite a few. Oh, there's some more over there. So it's the um, stay at home, protect lives, protect the NHS, isn't it? Some more over there. Quite a few. Nice one. Found some more up there and up there. Loads here. Yeah. It's good. A bit of support. It's lovely. Literally no one about ghost town. Look at this. No one at all. I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna bump in and then go with I can't talk this one, it's too early. I do that and then I'm gonna bump straight into someone. So I'm now coming up to the brewery, this place. Yeah. I used to work in here, I used to be one of the managers at Frankie and Venice, but literally everything in this place is shut down now. Look at it. Every single place. This place was supposed to be opening last month, didn't happen. Nothing going on at all. You see in the windows of every single place, you know, temporarily closed and all this stuff. Wanted to go in there, never got the chance. It's weird. It's where I used to work. But I'll show you the sign on the door. So everywhere now is showing those kinds of letters. We're saying, you know, because of COVID-19, this all closed down. some good shots of some of the hills so I made it up here there's not a great deal to see really no. <sighs> mildly interesting I suppose That is where the sun comes up, and that is where it goes down over that. I have holes in my shoes now. My feet are getting wet from the dewy grass. But do you know what? I, th I, th I thought there would be nobody about, but there's already people here. Over there, there's people, people playing football this time of the morning. It's like just gone seven o'clock. Absolutely crazy. Some nice art over here on the wall. Look at this. You see that? Some bears. It's nice. My feet are getting quite wet. I think everybody has had the same idea as me. <coughs> it's 
really, really pretty morning. Look at that sun. So this is Pitville Park. The lakes. Well, oh, no, it's not really a pond, it's too big to be a pond. It's definitely a lake. So it's just really pretty. Right over there, wow. There's the basketball courts over there. Some people down at the fall. Oh, okay. Oh, Jesus. Shit's kicking off over there. So I think that woman just got scared the shit out of by the swans which are down in the little shallow area so I think that's what that was all about can you hear that bloke sniffing? Jesus <laughs> this time of the morning is generally full of people just like walking their dogs things like that a few runners I've seen I've seen the swans already which is nice but um, this I just thought I'd talk briefly about what I'm doing with these videos and, you know, the kind of reasoning and the themes and <clears throat> the ideas that I have for each episode. So that's what these, this one's mainly about. But um, I'll show you around the park a bit first. Very nice. So in terms of reasoning for these videos, um, a lot of it's been because of lockdown and not being able to go out and do what it is I like to normally do um, so it's a good excuse as to, to start getting some of these done and it's you know it's just another kind of creative like I covered in the creative episode which is nice um, and that seems to have gone down pretty well um, so it's just trying to keep my mind active, not being at work, and things like that. Right, let's get moving. Let's get into that nice kind of time now where the sun's just coming through the trees. It's really pretty this behind me up here so pretty this is nice look at this this tree over here there's loads of squirrels that live up there the bridge that's where I shannon to marry me that bridge some guy just come out from under the bridge I don't know what he was doing down there, it was weird. <laughs> That's the boathouse. Used to work there. Amazing ice creams, they do that. And you can get a boat. So that is Pitville Park. It's quite a big place really. Okay, I mean this is the main kind of field area. It's pretty big. But um it's just a really we walk the dogs here quite a lot. They love it. But there's loads of stuff you can do. They've got tennis courts, they've got boating you can do, there's like a skate park as well, which is pretty good. Uh, yeah, what you can do, bring the dogs here as much as we can. But I'm gonna go on there and make a coffee, I think. That's my plan. So what are we thinking about these little kind of fill-in videos in between the main episodes? Is it something I should carry on doing, do we think? Just me going about my day kind of stuff. Uh, so, see where this goes. It's nice to have stuff in between to do, but um, it's a lot less work than trying to do the Skype stuff and everything else on top. So, um, 
I'll see how this goes if you know people want to watch it and you know I'll try and do some interesting stuff rather than just go for you know a crappy walk around the park kind of stuff I'll try and I might give you an insight I might do a a video later on today about how I do the episodes which might be good look at this house behind me that one there has a most uh, hocus pocusy kind of vibe to it really good anyway so I've just gotten in I'm now gonna make some tea I think tea. is that water in okay, yeah well, all that so yeah, so my plan for today is I'm going to try and do some um, stuff about what goes into the episodes and the process that it takes to do um, near the kettle. I'll wait till the kettle's boiled. <laughs> so when I'm um, doing the episodes, uh, if I'm in here in the kitchen, then I generally am here in front of the door so I get some light there. Um, when we did the Invisible Illnesses video, um, I brought down the light and uh, we did it on two cameras. So I did it on this one and I used my other camera, this one here. That's a 5D Mark II for those of you who care about the cameras and this one's a, a M50, both Canon. Um, this one's better for moving stuff because it's got the dual pixel focus stuff so it doesn't matter if I'm really close it'll just focus on me or if I'm really far away it just carries on. This one doesn't have that so you have to focus it manually so it's better for locked off kind of stuff which is why I use it upstairs as a second angle sometimes or if I'm I generally have this one on whoever I'm interviewing and that one's on me because I know not to move around too much. Um, these lights were just off Amazon. I think I got three of them for about 40 pounds, so they're ridiculously cheap. And they work, you know, you don't need stupidly expensive stuff to make videos. Um, the cages for the cameras, in case they fall over, which I have dropped them before. Uh, this one, newer, again, cheap stuff, you know, it's solid, it works. Off Amazon again, I think they were about £30 each or something like that. Um, bar doors on each one, just try and control the light a bit more. Uh, they're on both cameras, so there's one on this one and obviously on that one. Um, monitors for each one so I can see what... Although this one does have a flip out screen, it's very small. And if you're across the room, it's hard to see what it is that you're filming. Um, luckily this little screen on this camera does have focus peaking so you can see what's in focus and what's not. Um, the benefits of that are if you're filming in 4K it doesn't have the dual pixel autofocus, it uses normal uh, contrast detection I think. It uses one or the other one, contrast or phase detection, one being a lot slower and not as reliable whereas the dual pixel autofocus is perfect more or less it never I can just turn it on and leave it and not have to worry about it whereas the M uh, whereas the 5d this one doesn't have any autofocus so once it's focused it's locked in and you can't change it so you're better off using higher f-stop so f5 to probably 11 you know so you've got much further depth of field so you so you can move around a bit, so you you know you're not drifting in and out of focus. So that's the cameras I oh the monitors. On that one is a that's a seven inch one. On the because I use that one more on the five D Mark II. There, that's a five inch monitor, and they're both uh, Feel World ones. No issues again. Not the most expensive. They're comparable to the small HDs. So they both have 4K output, they both have HDMI in and out, so you can, you know, have one on the front of your screen, one on the back if you, you know, somebody's filming but you still want to see the angle they're filming at, which is good. They both have uh, audio out, so you can monitor the audio. They both have focus peaking, zebras, uh, 
histograms, all the usual kind of stuff. So that's the camera. So the thought process, I'm just making tea. So the thought process, if yeah, and yes, there is one for the people that think I'm a bit dim. So the, the thought process. Um, generally, I like to do these kind of videos, stuff that interests me, selfishly. But, um, you know, it's generally quite broad subject. So things like the invisible illnesses, the creativity, things like that. It's, everybody kind of has either somebody that knows somebody or it's very much a kind of thing where, you know, they like making things or invisible illnesses, you know, that is such a broad term. So it covers things like depression, anxiety, uh, diabetes, you know, basically anything that's wrong with you that you can't see where people assume that you're okay, where you may have obviously an inv invisible condition that, you know, is hard to demonstrate physically. So that's what the subject matters tend to center around. Um, the next one that's coming up on Friday the 15th is uh, Paranormal, which fascinates me. Um, I've, I've stopped making tea. Uh, so, that's the next one, which I put the usual stuff up about. Um, so yeah, so a spoon. So, I'm very much a tea la uh, milk last kind of person with tea and I don't like it looking anemic it's got golden brown the colour should be like my skin tone in this video apparently these amber lights aren't helping with the white balance in the kitchen so milk in last just a drop a bit more that's not quite long there we go how do people drink their tea? That could be another video. Yeah. Because that's quite another personal kind of thing, isn't it? It's, it's very much a British kind of how you drink your tea. You know, some people have lemon, some people have sugar, some people have what they call a builder's tea, which is milk and two sugars, I believe. But that's how I drink. It's a pretty solid way. I think that's, I don't think many people would mind drinking that. And that's how I make it, and if you don't like it, go somewhere. Another thing that I find irritating regarding, not irritating, but just a thing I'm worried, see I'm paranoid about it now, is this kind of tripod that I use. It's called a Joby Gorilla Pod. And um, it's just got the kind of flexible legs on it. So um, you can wrap it around stuff and you can use it for different things. You know, you can put on a lamppost, you can wrap it around your head, you know, you can do more or less anything with it. But it's got no... Uh, like bubble spirit level in so I'm always paranoid like if I'm gonna be at a funny angle because there's no set flat you know you rely on it looking straight so now to me it looks like that door there is on a slant but it looks I, I don't know anyway so that's another thing that I have to deal with what's that Twitter but the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some of the stuff I do on my iPad to show you what goes in to making these videos. So the process for making an episode is um, I have a notebook so I tend to write a rough kind of timeline out and the bits I need that go into the episode. So for example the uh, episode 5 uh, that was the uh, invisible illnesses one. So th I don't know if there's going to be back, back to front or not. So um, I come up with the title. Uh, the opening scene, I like to change the introduction depending on what the theme is. So rather than just run the normal intro, it's content based. So rather than just seeing the same kind of 30 or 40 second intro, it changes it up to give you an idea of what's coming up and the theme and the mood of the video. Um, so I tend to have a shot list of what I need to get. So here it says uh, things like uh, sunrise time lapse, uh, the curtain scene with the silhouetting, uh, B roll coffee scene. So it's, that kind of implies that it's going to be more of a sit down kind of 
informal kind of um, discussion, kind of base video. And then it says introduction, roll the intro. Uh, so then I have uh, a list of the order of the video. So the interviews. Uh, so it's Amy, Dave, Shannon and me. Um, it has some other stuff here. I didn't include in it because it was already at 45 minutes. So I didn't want to go over that. I tend to not try not to go over 50 minutes because it's a long time for people, you know, to have to sit and watch. So, I mean, they're still long, but, and then, uh, uh, finish with a conclusion. Obviously I thank the people that have taken the time to be involved in it. Um, and just, a, a closing, I try to close on something a bit more upbeat positivity kind of stuff. So I tend to try and close on a music thing because obviously I love music. Um, so the first few episodes, it was, uh, thank you, baked potato. Uh, Matt Lucas gave me permission to use that. So thank you, Matt. Uh, the last episode, uh, invisible illnesses. Um, I found a song and it surprised me. I didn't know this song because I love queen and we were supposed to go and see Kerry Ellis and Brian May on the candlelight kind of tour, which was supposed to be at Cheltenham Town Hall, but um, he was poorly, so uh, they had to cancel it. So um, I didn't get to go and see that, which really upset me. And uh, thank you, Chris, who bought tickets for that, even though, like, thank you so much for doing that. Um, but yeah, they had to cancel it, so we didn't get to go. But um, anyway, they do a song on, oh, what's the album? Oh, let me, I'm going to find out right now. What's the album called? Uh, Gary Ellis. Oh, not Elise. Ellis. Panic Attack. The song's called Panic Attack, by the way. Uh, what album was it on? Golden Days. That's it. It was on the Golden Days album, uh, Brian May and Kerry Ellis. Uh, the actual song is called It's Gonna Be Alright brackets the panic attack song but because um, in the episode obviously if you've seen it thank you uh, if you haven't go and have a look at it and catch up on the other episodes uh but in that episode invisible illnesses um i speak about my experience with panic attacks uh because obviously if you've seen the episode i go into depth about all that uh and it it, it just sums up perfectly for me, how I felt during going going through that time when I had to deal with it. So, and it's, you know, it, as the title suggests, it's going to be all right. It's quite uplifting. You know, it goes through the stages of, you know, the panic attacks and things like that. And I just thought it just kind of summed up the whole mood of that episode really well. So that's what went into the thought process involving that episode. So next, regarding the, obviously, once you've got the idea, once you've got the people involved that, you know, said they want to help with the episode, the next stage is filming it. So I've already gone through the cameras, uh, the audio I use. Um, there's a few different ways I can do it. Um, I always try to back it up. So at least I have another, if something fails or something goes wrong, at least I have a second kind of way of recovering it. So the first way I'd like to do it, which is the highest quality that I can get, is with one of these. This is a condensed microphone. It's made by Blue Yeti, which I didn't know is actually owned by Logitech. So really, really good microphone. Blue Yeti, I don't know if it will focus. Blue Yeti. So, um, I'll cover some basic technical aspects with the stuff, but I don't want to bore you too much about it because this isn't like a tech review kind of video. So on the front here, you've got a volume knob. Now the volume knob, that is only for monitoring. So if you plug headphones into the bottom there, that's all that does. It's purely a monitor output. On the other side, oh, and you've got a mute button there. So if you're kind of talking, you know, and you want to kill it in between. If you're doing anything live with this, then you can just mute the signal. On the back, you have a gain control. 
So that is how hot the signal is going into your computer. So I always tend to have it set about, at the most I would have it is about halfway because that limits plosives, it also limits uh, peaking and it's, it's just kind of a nice midway kind of setting to be on because you can always boost it a little bit in post uh, if you've got a compressor plug in and uh, you can alter the gain a bit that way and just level it out a bit. Uh, what, the other control on the back here is a polarity pattern switch so it has a stereo setting so it picks up evenly from left and right so if you're playing acoustic guitar you can have it picking up sort of the the neck end more or the bridge end more as well as sort of the sound hole in the middle uh, it has a omnidirectional so it picks up sound from all the way around it so if you're doing like a conference call you could plonk this in the middle of the table and it will pick up everybody that's talking around it the only bad thing with that is it does pick it's very ambient so you will get a lot of room noise with it uh, you have a uh, cardioid pickup pattern which basically means it picks up sound from the front and rejects all the sound well not all of it it rejects the majority of the sound from the back and it rejects a lot from the sides so that's good if you're doing podcasts and things like that or skype calls uh, the other pickup pattern is a uh, bi-directional so it picks up sound from the front and the back and rejects heavily from the sides so if you're doing an interview with two people and you put this in the middle of the table it will pick up from the front and the back and that's although it records as one channel as far as I believe it's very different from the stereo which blends the stereo blends the two signals so you get a backwards and forwards from left to right uh, bi-directional is still a stereo recording but it picks up evenly from both sides so you'll still hear each person left and right but it will be a balanced signal from each side of the bi-directional capsule inside that got more technical than what I thought it was going to but if you're interested then it's a really good mic um this is the blackout edition so this is i think the second highest model they do they do a blue yeti pro which has a xlr output so you can use this on uh audio interfaces with xlr inputs and mixing desks as well but this is just the usb one because i only use this for these videos and you can also plug these directly into your iPads and uh, iPhones and use the software that you can get from the App Store from that on your relative devices and platforms. So that's technique one. The other technique is I use one of these field recorder. Uh, this is a Olympus LSP1 stereo. XY configuration on the capsules at the top. Really, really sturdy one. All metal. Oh, turned it on. All metal. Um, covered USB port on the bottom. SD card. It does come with 4 gig internal storage, but it does support, I believe, up to 128 gigabyte cards, micro SD cards, which go in the back. In there, in there. Uh, it does come with a rechargeable battery. Uh, you can rec you can charge this straight into your computer using the little slidey USB port on there. Um, records up to I think it's 196 uh, kilobytes second on PCM MP3 AAC uh, WAV WAV forms as well. Uh, WAV forms is the highest bit rate on this one, I believe. It also has a microphone in and a headphone out so you can monitor real time the audio from this one. So again, another really good. And it also has obviously built in limiter. It has a zoom function so you can zoom in to the source of the audio. And it also has a VMA limiter and booster. I think that's right. The third and final way is the way I'm recording this video. So I use a Rode 
uh, video mic crow, mic go, mic, it's the smaller one with the windshield on, uh, the passive one. Um, I've got no issues with it. I did think about getting the video mic pro plus, but for the for these kinds of, for the, for these kind of videos, it's perfect. You know the sound quality. I can you know EQ it and edit it and add compression and all this different stuff to make it sound. I think just as good as the video mic pro. I mean that's my area. I do music and sound, so I can't really warrant spending two hundred and forty pounds on a microphone for this really and besides which Shannon would kill me uh, so this works fine for me uh, between the three uh, methods there you know I get you know the sound is good you know it's fine um, it's a lot more work you know syncing the audio after because the onboard cameras uh, the onboard microphones on the cameras are just shit so I would never well I try not to use it I mean it has happened in some of the episodes where you know, it's just been, I've uploaded without thinking, which will change. I will, you know, be more cautious and, you know, but it's one of those things. By the time I've filmed everything and edited it, edit, edited it all down, you know, I've probably seen each episode five, six times and they're an hour long, you know, so I, I have to sit there six hours cutting through all the stuff, editing it all together Make sure all the audio's right. Make sure all the audio is the same level. Making sure it's all colour graded the same. Which you know I'll go through all this in a minute as well. If you're still in, if you're still there, you know it's hard to see if anyone is still there. You know that's the only thing with you know this kind of stuff. I can't see you, which makes me very sad. So the next step in doing the episodes after the filming is the editing, which is the longest part. And it's probably the part I enjoy the most. It's the most tedious part because if you're using more than one camera, you know, you got to switch between obviously different angles and, you know, dealing with multiple SD cards and CF cards. You've got to sync the audio across both cameras. If you're using one audio source, which is probably the easiest way to do it. So I use one audio source off one camera and use that audio for both. Uh, chopping and changing between all the different angles like I said uh, the software I use that's the easiest and quickest for me is iMovie or I've used uh, Adobe Premiere Rush or I have used Premiere Pro and LumaFusion and all these other things but they're just for what I do I you know I don't need you know to spend you know 300 pounds for Premiere Pro or I have had the Creative Cloud by Adobe before, but there's I can get by on what I have, and I have iMovie on my main computer upstairs, which is where you know the main bulk of the editing happens because there's there's a lot more features in the main version than on my iPad. The iPad version of iMovie is crap. It's really really crap. Um, it's really really limiting there's no color grading there's no you know option to edit anything post apart from I think it's five filters five or six filters which is shit you know Apple sort iMovie out on iPad I don't understand why you know you spend all this money on an iPad a thousand plus pounds on one of the pro models and they don't even give you a decent editor you know to edit videos, which is what is made, like, sort it out, it's, just... <sighs> that's my rant over, but, like I'm saying, uh, bulk of the editing gets done upstairs, uh, quick kind of, the only thing I use iMovie on my iPad for is to trim down clips, so they're ready to just dump into the main computer, then I can stitch them together, cut between the scenes, um, and that's what I use my iPad for mainly because when Shannon's at work and I'm down here with the dogs, I, I can't, it, I'm very limited in terms of what I can do, you know, because it takes hours. I mean, when you think the episodes that go up, they're 45, 50 minutes long. For the creative episode, I had five hours of interviews to edit down 
and that video was about 50 minutes I think and I still have to that's not just me taking a chunk of stuff out you know I have to sit there and physically edit all that down to use you know less than a third of that footage so I mean it, it does take time and that's why sometimes the episodes are a little bit late going up because I'm I always finish it on the Friday it's always done religiously by the Friday but because of how long they are and how you know the rendering process which I'll go over as well you know if you're still here that's another process so the that's the editing kind of stuff done and um that's the most tedious part I, I not tedious it's the most it takes the most amount of time because just how much footage that there can be and then obviously throughout the week you know if there's once I've done all the kind of sit down -y bits like the, the talking the Skype interviews and all the kind of fill in bits uh, another bit another one of the episodes that took me absolutely forever to do was the funny families the stop motion animation took me forever literally having to draw everything color it all in cut it all out I mean that took me up until Thursday literally the, the day before it I uploaded it you know because I think I said before you know to get about 10 seconds footage it, it's it's a, about a five hour process to get you know the photos done because I don't know if you know how stop motion works basically you have all your pictures cut out you have your scene set up and it's individual photos so you take individual photos and move each thing a millimeter at a time so you take a photo move it a millimeter take a photo move it a millimeter take a photo move it. so that's what you do and uh, for that just for the intro you know with the TV and the hand coming at the remote sorting the lamp out in the picture and all that stuff that was over a thousand photos I had to take to get that 20 second clip so that I've given myself a bit of a break from doing that because that was not how it I enjoyed doing it and everything else but it's one of those things where you you kind of think oh, I should do that then you think well I don't know how to how would I do that so you raid YouTube learn how to do it and then I got I think it got to about halfway through Tuesday and I was literally like oh my god like, why have I started doing this I'm so far behind but I pushed I pushed through it and I finished it and I'm glad I did because I really like that episode some highlights for me you know I'm digressing now uh, but my uncle dancing that was pretty funny and the Shannon falling over clip with that, that poor boy I hope he wasn't hurt he must have been but the scream oh my god so funny <laughs> but that's the editing process so it gives you a little kind of insight into that kind of side of thing that's that so once you've edited it all down rendered it post it the next thing you have to do is try and get as many people as you can to watch it because I'm not going to go into the whole YouTube kind of platform and stuff like that. There's things that the way they run it, algorithms, tag words, keywords, all this other stuff that you have to bear in mind for when you're uploading to YouTube. So you have to use certain words, you have to, you know, there's so many things that you have to do in order to get your video to show up as much as possible. But um, I tend to just make sure, and I know it must be annoying, but I do share it a lot. Every day I share the video, well, more than, one, more than once a day. But I just want it to show up in people, you know, on the top of lists as much as I can. So that's what I do. I use Twitter. I constantly, you know, send in tweets out about it, links, tagging people in it. Uh, again, with Twitter, you've got to use keywords, hashtags. Uh, same with Instagram, just to keep keep sharing it literally just badger the hell out of the platform just keep sharing keep sharing and um your views will go up um regarding youtube i keep an eye on how well it's doing they have an app called youtube studio which is this i'll show you quickly now i don't know if it will i don't know if you can see that yeah. so these are my videos uh, tells you how many views they've had likes comments uh, your average uh, analytics at the top so it tells you watch time 
It tells you how many views you've had on the channel total. Uh, it shows you your comments. Uh, videos is where it displays all of your videos that you've uploaded. Uh, playlist, so you can add uh, each video to a specific kind of playlist. So people can just go straight to where they, where, what they want to watch. So I have three on mine. I have daily life struggles, music and vlogcast. So vlogcast are obviously the episodes. Uh, music is where I post my shitty attempts at trying to sing and play guitar. I'm not a singer, like I always said. Daily life struggles, so that would be something like this, where I'm sharing content, where it's not a vlogcast, it's just kind of a fill-in, keep you up to date, what I'm doing, how it works, kind of stuff. Uh, and it tells you, you know, where people are watching your videos, countries, how... Uh, while you're being discovered, so impressions, so that's how many times people see your videos. Impression click-through rate is another, I won't bore you with all this, but that's how you keep a track of how well your channel's doing. And they have the same kind of thing for things like Twitter, Instagram, you know, you can boost posts, you can uh, sponsor videos, so you have to pay to get it promoted. I have done that. Um, it does work. You do. You definitely on Instagram. You definitely get more views. Uh, so, for example, on Instagram, I think the most views that I had and likes I had on a uh, upload, which was one of the band ones I did, and it was a shot of a uh, band. It was just playing a Fender uh, Jazzmaster, I think it was, and I had I think it was about seven hundred and fifty likes on that. Photo. So, I mean, it does work. But um, you do have to pay for it. So that's the next stage of after you've filmed, after you've conceptual stage, filming, editing, promoting, and then you're back to the beginning again for the next episode. So that's the kind of conception, filming, editing, promoting, four main stages, I'd say. So that's another point I didn't raise when I was talking about the cameras is the misery, and I mean unfabled annoying annoyance and just upkeep of trying to stay on top of things is battery life how many batteries it takes to you know do this and if a battery runs out and you haven't or you've forgotten to charge it so annoying so um and, and i forgot to include this as well actually so this is what i also ah there it is find it oh, i lost it so i also use one of these a GoPro. This is the Hero 3, so it's not the newest one, but it works, it's fine. Um, so these are good for if you want really wide kind of like action, they're called action cams, but um, they're good if you want a really kind of wide field of view. So if you have this like on a pole or you can stick it somewhere because they're so small and you, they come with like little cases so they're waterproof so you can chuck them in the lake, you can put them in baths, swimming pools, diving, windsurfing, all, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's another thing I use. So, but covering, going back to what I was talking about, is batteries. So batteries, chargers, that, that. I also have another three of these upstairs, along with the, over there, I've got another charger with GoPro batteries in. So I have three GoPro batteries, three GoPro batteries. I have three for this camera. I have four for the other camera, the 5D, because the 5D takes the same batteries as the two monitors for the cameras. So when you think that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten 10 batteries to keep charged because the battery on the M50 doesn't last very long. So you, you need at least two, minimum two. Three is a good amount. <clears throat> because if you have three, you can have one in the camera, one spare, so you've always got two on you, and then you've got one charging to swap out the one that is dying. So three is a safe number, batteries for the M50, I would say. So yeah, that's the bane of my life, it is batteries. Rant two over.